Welcome to the Somerset County Clerk's Office. I'm County Clerk Steve Peter. And if you come into the office, chances are there's three main reasons why you're going to come in here. The first is you've got something to do with your house, with a deed, either a deed, mortgage, lien, something of that nature. You can come in here, you go to this side of the counter, and our staff will help you. Um, the second biggest way that you'll come in here is to do a passport application, and that's over here on the other side of our front counter. Um, and we can take the photograph for you, and we have a, a zero rejection rate on our photographs, and uh, our staff is very good at, at setting it up and making sure that everything's just right, uh, even with small kids, um, which is pretty amazing. So um, I'm going to have you come with me here, if we've got everything set up, if that's a possibility now. Come on in here. As you can see, because of the pandemic, we've put measures in place for safety. That's why I'm wearing the mask right now, because I'm out in the public area. We've got the plexiglass to keep everybody nice and safe. If you come into the office right now, we do need you to make an appointment. All of that's available through the website. And then we need you to wear a mask and, and take proper precautions as you come in. Hopefully this uh, pandemic won't last forever and we can move on to a, a more normal life. But for now, that's what we, we've got in place. So let's go in through this door and we'll go into the record room. Somebody like me who <clears throat> was born to be a librarian, um, this is a fantastic place. So this has records uh, from the county going back to the beginning of the county. Um, we have paper copies for a lot of the older items. And of course, now in the 21st century, we've got things that are digitized and available through the website. And as we go back a little bit later on, I'm gonna show you our brand new title uh, search system and show you some of the things that are available through that. But you can see we've got a ton of paper information. If you do need to say research the history of your house, you can come into the office, uh, now make an appointment, but you can come in and the staff will help you out. So let's go back over to the election department, which is the third of the big reasons that you would wanna come into the office. It's lunch hour now, which is why nobody's out here for the moment. Um, but you would come in here if you want to do a ballot. You can make the application when the elections are coming up. Um, the primary is getting ready to go pretty soon. Next Tuesday, if you're in one of the three municipalities that has a fire district, you're going to have a fire district election. Um, but you come in here, fill out an application. Once the ballots are printed, we can hand you one on the spot. You can vote it out in the atrium and turn it in directly to the Board of Elections. Um, if for some reason you have the urge to run for office, as I did, um, you would submit petitions here. If you're running for a countywide office or a school election, uh, for example, that's a, a good way for a lot of people to get involved. School election petitions are due at the end of uh, July, the last Friday, or last Monday of July. So you come in here and this is where we do all the election stuff. Uh, we have you come back to the ceremony room now and I will show you where I do marriages. If you call the office, you're gonna likely talk to Ida. This is Ida here, say hello to the fans. So if you do call her and you're irate about something, please be kind. Ida's just doing her job. She doesn't make all the rules. If you wanna yell at somebody, yell at me. <laughs> all right, now that we're safely back in a, a non-public space, I'm gonna take off my mask because as anybody out there who's watching this, who has glasses knows, wearing a mask and having glasses is not a fun combo. Um, 
but I thought I'd show you a couple of things that we have here in the office from the history of the office. Um, we just went through the election department. Here is what an old ballot from 1945 looked like. Um, and the interesting thing is, back at that point in time, you still voted for a coroner, uh, in addition to the, the usual offices that we have available nowadays. Um, we do have some records uh, pertaining to naturalization here in the office. Um, at one point up through the 70s, 70s, 60s, somewhere in that range, um, you actually applied for naturalization through the county. Um, and so we have some of those older records. A lot of people these days are getting dual citizenship with Italy. Um, and so we have a lot of requests to search for our documentation uh, for dual citizens there. Another type of document that we have here that most people don't realize exists in Somerset County is this. This is a record of manumission. Um, there were slaves in New Jersey and in Somerset County. Um, this is a record of various slaves being freed. Um, they were not literate, so they had to make their mark by dipping their finger in ink and putting their, their thumbprint there. So if you want to do some research on that after the pandemic lifts, um, please get in contact with me. I'd be happy to have people utilize the resources here a bit more. Uh, I am searching for grants to try to get some of those records digitized, but uh, as you can well imagine, money's not really flowing at the moment. And digitization projects are incredibly expensive. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, so as I mentioned in the record room, we've got a brand new land title management system. I'm gonna spin this and hopefully this is going to be visible. So to use this, you are going to come to the county website and go to government and county clerk tab here. And I'll take you to my page here. And on the side, we've got various options for you. There's the, the land record search, which is what I'm going to show you here. Um, but an important part of the new product um, is what we call a property reporting notification service. And this is something that people have been asking for for a long time. In fact, when I came into office, there were two letters on my desk my very first day. One was a letter from my predecessor. The other one was a letter from a, a citizen who wrote to say, please get a, a property notification service. So um, it's taken a while with government bureaucracy, but we now have it in place. So you can go down here and sign up for um, this. It's a free service. And basically what it does is if any recording is made on a property that you have an interest in, you will get notified of it. So it's something to just give you peace of mind that you know nobody's recording a lien that sometimes happens to especially public officials, um, but it just lets you know that something's going on with your property. But if you wanna do a search on the property, you go to the county records, land records search here, click on that, it will take you to our new site. You can do searches for absolutely free. You don't need to create an account or anything, but if you wanna see the images, you do need to create an account. You'll go up to this button here, log in, and uh, create an account. Um, I already have an account on here, so I'll go ahead and log in. And that will bring you to the main search page. Let's do a search on the name. Go in here. You'll enter the name. The important thing to note, it, it, we have it on the page, but it's last name first. So you do Peter, Steve, Spell it correctly. And then that will bring up a listing of all of the instruments that have my name on it. So the first one there pertains to me being county clerk. These others deal with the two homes that I owned in, in Somerset County. So down here is the deed to my current home. 
which is a condo here in Somerville. So if I double click on that, brings it up and I can see the, the actual deed for my home. It was recorded in 2017. So that's the basics of the, the land record search system. So we're excited to have this in place. It's a, a very nice system, very modern. Um, I, I invite you to, to come and take a look at it. If you do use it and you have any questions, right below where we have the, the county land record search, we do have a video that will walk you through how to use the system. So that should guide you along. But uh, that's the basics of the county clerk's office. Um, I'd be happy to take questions from anybody. Okay, um, here is a first question from a resident. Oh, how do we make an appointment? And what are the hours? So we're open um, Monday through Friday, uh, 8.15 to 4 o'clock. Um, on Wednesdays, we're open extended hours until uh, 6 p.m. Um, and come to the website, and that'll give you all the indications on how to make an appointment. Different types of appointments require different uh, information. For the passport, we're going to ask, you know, how many people are in the party, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can also call the office, 908-231-7013. Um, You'll talk to Ida. We met as we came in here. She can set you up with an appointment if you're going to do uh, recording or if you want to um, register a business name. That's something else that is uh, frequently done through the office. Um, we can set you up with an appointment through that. Okay, Steve, we have another question. Um, I received a vote by mail ballot last year. Will I get another one mailed this year? It's a good question. Um, vote by mail ballot, it depends on your status. So if when you filled out the application for a vote by mail ballot, not last year because everybody got one last year, but prior to that, if you indicated that you wanted to get a ballot for all future elections, you will automatically get a ballot. Um, if you did not indicate that, then you'll need to apply again. But if you're unsure of your status, just give us a call and we can look you up and let you know. It's a good question. Okay, um, about the, uh, the public search site, um, they wanna know um, if they can access these records from home. Yes, this, the, the public search site is, this is for the home users. Um, I mean, I happen to be in the office now, but this is my own personal laptop and just regular web browser. As you can see, this is a Macintosh, works cross-platform with any browser. Well, not, not uh, Internet Explorer 7 and whatnot. Stay away from Internet Explorer. And, Oops, could, you, put it that way. and could you give them the URL? Um, easiest if you go to our website, but I can give you the URL, which is liveacclaim.co.somerset.nj.us. Questions. Um, I want to become a notary. Can you explain the process? All right. To become a notary, um, you first have to go through the state. So what you're going to do is contact your uh, either your legislator, your assembly person, or your senator, and have them sponsor you for uh, becoming a notary. And most of them, you can call the office. They've got a, a very quick process. That then goes to the state who will issue you a commission to become a notary. When you get that commission, you will contact us to administer the oath. Right now we're doing that on Zoom because everything during the pandemic is being done virtually. Um, in normal times, you would come into the office, um, but contact us when you get your commission, we'll give you the oath. Great. Uh... They had, somebody asked if you could go through the, um, the notification steps again. Okay. So if you want to sign up, I'm going to take you in through everything. You will click on the property recording notification service. And if you click there to subscribe, that will reroute you to our acclaim website. 
and we will fill in the items in this form. So you're going to put in your email address, and then you can put in the, the names to be monitored. So frequently you're going to do it on your own personal name um, and any aliases you might have used. And by that, I also mean if you've been married, you might want to use your maiden name, your married name, uh, et cetera, et cetera. If you're looking for, if you've got a business that also holds titles to, to property, you can just enter in the business name as it is. Right now, the system is configured to, to limit you to five of these. We're working on a new system that will allow you to enter 10 or 20 or a much larger number. Um, once you've done that, you just click the sign up button. We will send you an email notifying you that you're signed up to the system. If for some reason you want to unsubscribe, let's say you've moved or you want to update things, just come back to the same site and go through the same process. Next question. Um, what if there is an error on, on my information? I look it up. What should I do? The, the easiest thing to do is send us an email indicating what the error is. Um, if it's a misspelling of a name, those are relatively easy to correct. But once we know what type of error we're looking at, we can then give you a call and discuss how it needs to be corrected. So the easiest thing to do is send an email to countyclerk at co.somerset.nj.us. I did not create the URLs that the county uses. I would have made something much shorter if I had done so. Okay. Um, can I obtain a copy of um, the, the release to show that my mortgage has been paid off? Yes, that is, um, you can actually do most of that through the, the public search site. Um, you'll need to sign up for an account to get that because that's in with an image, but yes, you can do that. Can you search for deed information on anything other than the name? I'm thinking of historic or public buildings specifically. Hmm. Um, yes, you can. Um, there's a variety of ways of, of searching that are available to the site. I would invite you to come in, take a look at that video um, for how to do various searches. Um, and if you still have questions, give us a call. So for historic things, we might need you to walk through some of that. That's a very good question. How do I schedule a marriage ceremony? All right, so the first thing that you're gonna do um, once you wanna get married is you're gonna apply for the license through the town that you live in. So either, either spouse. Um, You'll go apply for the license and you will put in that you want to be married by the Somerset County Clerk. So at, tell them my name. You will then call Ida and Ida will walk you through um, setting up an appointment. Right now I'm doing weddings two days a week on Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, and I limit it to just four per day uh, because otherwise I'd be doing nothing but, but weddings. Um, she will confirm for you the, the time. And uh, right now during the pandemic, again, everything's by Zoom. So I conduct Zoom weddings, um, which offers some advantages. Uh, I have done a couple of ceremonies where the couple, it's been an early morning ceremony and they've decided to get married in their PJs. It works for them, it works for me. Um, not quite as romantic as being here in person. Yeah. Do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? If so, press control alt F5. Not quite as romantic, but hopefully as the uh, pandemic ends, we we'll get people back right here in this very room and, and do a ceremony. As you can tell, it's a very serious ceremony. Um, and is there a fee for that wedding? There is no fee for that wedding. Not for me. They're, the municipality will extract a fee to get the uh, license for you. And then when they issue certified copies of that certificate, they will charge you a fee. But our office does not charge you. Um, what if my fiance doesn't speak English very well? Uh, if your fiance does not speak English, uh, let us know. Let us know what they speak. Um, I 
went to school for linguistics. So I've studied a fair number of languages. I routinely do ceremonies in English and in Spanish, um, but I've also done parts in uh, German, Dutch, Italian, Polish, Portuguese, Russian, and Latin so far. So uh, I'm very welcome to uh, extending that list. All right, so that sounds like that's the last question. One more brief chance if you wanna submit something. Um, if not, I am always here for you. Uh, call anytime you need anything and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I have a question. Well, can you hear me? Yes. I don't know how to send a chat message. So <laughs> I just wanted to, what changes, if any, are happening with the registration and voting process this year? So um, the registration process is largely the same as last year. Last year, they, they added the, the online registration portal to where you could actually vote, uh, register to vote online, um, either by linking it to your motor vehicle record because the signature's on file for that, or by signing it on your device. That's still available this year, or you can do it by paper. In terms of voting for the primary, we're going back to the normal way we've always done it. So if you want to get a vote by mail ballot, apply, or if you're on the all future list, you'll automatically be sent one. Um, if you wanna to go to your polling place, you're gonna have that opportunity to go to the polling place and vote on a machine. Um, for the fall, that will largely be the same, but there will be a 10 day period prior to the election where early voting is gonna be in place. Um, we're still going through the process of procuring the, the uh, equipment that we need for that. And we'll have lots of details about that before the, the general so, election. So that would be an in-person early voting with a machine? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. How can I find the floor plans for my home? Um, that's, that's another frequent question. Um, floor plans and land surveys are generally not filed with the deed. So they're not something that we have on record here. Um, I would suggest if you're looking for that uh, type of information, first check with your municipal planning board. If any modifications were made, there's a good chance that they got plans on file for that modification. But that's something, unfortunately, we don't have. But that's a good question, very frequently. All right. Thank you very much for coming today. And um, I guess we'll play the uh, exit theme song. <laughs>